Most people think of justice as something external. A situation is either just or unjust, fair or unfair. But justice is also about the way you judge. How you judge the outside world is a reflection of how just you are. Welcome to Chasing Gods, where we find meaning with symbols and myths. If you find my videos valuable, please support me by becoming a Patreon supporter to help me make better videos, or by sharing, commenting, and liking this video to help me reach others who might like this content. To judge with justice is believed to be one of the top virtues by philosophers, writers, and artists of the ancient world. From ancient Egypt to ancient Greece and Rome, justice has been personified by a goddess who not only belongs to the highest ranks of gods, but whose symbolism is even sought by them. You could imagine what justice must have meant to men. This goddess I'm talking about is Lady Justice. You've probably seen her, but may not have paid too much attention. She could be a statue, an emblem, or figurine to represent justice in the legal system worldwide. She holds a scale, a sword, and at times she wears a blindfold. She has several other symbols, each of which bears powerful lessons. In this video, we'll go through each of the Lady Justice's symbols to understand what it takes to judge with justice. We'll also see how the evolution of her symbols reflect how we developed our understanding of justice over time. We'll get to that shortly, but first, let's go through the history of Lady Justice. As of today, the oldest representation of judgment and justice is the balance scale found in ancient Mesopotamian and ancient Egyptian mythological art. In the ancient Egyptian Book of Death, which dates back to around 2400 BCE, the scale depicts the judgment of man's soul after death. Ancient Egyptians believed that the soul is eternal and that after death it receives a fate based on the integrity of its recently lived life. The image shows the heart of the dead being weighed on a scale against an ostrich feather. This feather belongs to the goddess Ma'at. Ma'at is the goddess of cosmic order and social order. But that's roughly speaking. What she truly represents is untranslatable, kind of like the yin-yang. Still, it would include truth, balance, order, harmony, law, justice, and morality in the world of humans and deities and the universe. That's pretty astronomical. So much that all other deities wanted their names associated to hers, including pharaohs and kings. Fast forward about 1500 years, ancient Greece had a goddess named Themis whose representation is also untranslatable but overall covers divine order, law, and justice. Themis is a titaness. Titans are the generation of gods that existed prior to the Olympian gods which most people are familiar with today. Themis ensured that Zeus, the king of the Olympian gods, was well nursed. She also became one of his wives and his counselor and assisted him in creating the world. Zeus carries out the action, but not before Themis' advice. There is a larger thing at play behind the scenes. Themis, having been one of the Delphic oracle, is also a prophetic goddess. In later renditions, Themis carries a balanced scale, a sword, and at times she wears a crown. With Zeus, Themis had a daughter named Dike, whose representation is closer to today's idea of justice. Dike is a goddess of temporal law, justice, and moral order. Dike is characterized as holding a scale, a cornucopia, a tool to strike with, and wearing a wreath. Like her mother, she only advises Zeus, and he materializes. She's also associated to time, as she makes sure that things happen at the right moment. Like the Egyptian Ma'at, Dike also joins the functions of the underworld, judging the dead to send them off to their merited destination. As the Roman Empire takes over, Themis and Dike are replaced by the goddess Eutitia. Eutitia is Latin for the quality of being just. The word becomes justice in French and then justice in English. Its root just also forms the word judging. Justitia, she was mostly understood as the embodiment of the virtue of justice. Association and representation of this goddess was highly sought by monarchy, emperors, kings, and queens. 
Like her Greek counterpart, Justitia is portrayed with the balance scale, sword, and at times, a crown. However, through the ages, especially the Middle Ages, increasingly more symbols become attributed to her, including the blindfold, which has a lasting impact and becomes one of the three most common symbols portrayed with her in modern times. The other symbols include measurement tools like the protractor and compass, or a book of laws that would replace the scale. Justitia was also portrayed with an ostrich, which reminds us of Ma'at, with lions, a snake, or dog. She's often seen standing on top of a globe, an evil being, or a masked man. Artists often pair Justitia with Prudentia, the personification of prudence. Prudence also holds a mirror and a snake. When Christianity came in the picture, it adopted previous symbolism by portraying Christ with Justitia's scale, sword, and lion. Like Ma'at and Dike, the Archangel Michael uses a scale to weigh the soul of humans at death, representing moral justice while Jesus overlooks from above, standing on a globe with a sword nearby, representing world justice. Today, Justitia is known as Lady Justice. She's iconic across the world's courtrooms, law offices, and anything that has to do with regulation and fair play. Okay, done with the history, and on to the juicy stuff. Interpreting the symbols of justice. Let's start with her most common symbol, the scale. The scale is an ancient device that weighs one object against another. Ancient Egyptians used it to portray the judgment of a man by weighing his heart against Ma'at's ostrich feather. If the heart is equal or lighter than her feather, it is considered good and goes to the heavenly afterlife. It's debated why the ostrich's feather is emblematic of justice or equality, but some suggest that it's due to the feather's symmetrical sides. Humans have understood that it's really difficult to judge a person, and that's why they left it to the gods. We all sin and do good, but how much of each is what counts? A thief or a liar is a sinner. But what if their good outweighs their bad? Let's look at a scene, which took place in a Parisian subway in the early morning hours. A drunk man is passed out on the bench, and a thief, upon seeing this, takes advantage of the situation and pickpockets him. He then leaves somewhere outside the camera view. The drunk man, still in bad shape, decides to get up and falls in the subway tracks. A train is approaching the platform. A bystander does not do anything. Maybe he doesn't want to risk his life. Maybe he's thinking, too bad, you're drunk. Who knows? He doesn't help. And what do we see here? The thief runs back and tries to save his victim's life. Now, of course, this is just a snippet of his life. We could not judge his entire soul as good or bad. But this short video shows that all our sins and virtues must be accounted for when making an overall judgment of a person. The weighing scale also reminds us that all sins and virtues come in degrees. All sins weigh differently. Stealing is not the same gravity as killing, and each sin comes in disgrace as well. A white lie is not the same as a lie that jeopardizes people or parties. Lying once in a blue moon is not the same thing as lying all the time. Killing with intent is not the same thing as killing by carelessness. Though some types of judgments are not meant for humans to have, others are. Making a judgment is an essential part of living. It's required before acting. The scales of justice represent a crucial trait of proper judgment, the careful measuring of evidence. This means that when judging a situation or a person, one needs to think like a scientist. Your initial thought is not a fact. It's your theory, and probably a bad one. Based on the scientific method, you would have started at observation and skipped all the following five steps and had drawn your conclusion bad scientist. Sure, you're not going to make a science experiment for each judgment that you make, but at least you should know that your judgment is far from being accurate. First, you need to gather all evidence. For example, the other day, I saw my boyfriend carelessly stuff my clean laundry in my drawer, and I accused him of being careless because it's other people's items. It turns out that he does the same thing to his own clean laundry, and that I was the careless one with judgment. This scenario sounds trivial, but think of the times you judge a stranger of being racist or hateful because he or she was rude to you. What if this person spoke the exact same way with his children whom you knew he adored, 
Now, will your previous judgment be the same? Not only do we need to gather as much evidence as possible before making a judgment, but we also need to be careful with how we gather that evidence. For example, imagine that you pass by a local bar and notice John drinking. Not enough data to judge him. A few months later, you go again and see him again. And another few months later, he's there again. Now you have three data points spread in nine months. John must be an alcoholic. Now, you may be close to the truth, but were the days that you observed John drinking randomly chosen? Had you realized that each time you observed John, you were on your way from your Pilates class, which happened to be on Friday evening, you would have understood that no, John is not an alcoholic. He's just unwinding from a long work week. To accurately judge someone or a situation, one needs to keep a constant watch of people's actions and intentions, a power humans don't have. This is why we see the all-seeing eye around justice. Time is also a factor in judgment, as time is revealing. More time provides more data. Time has been linked to the Greek goddess of justice. The longer you know someone, or the more you study something, the better judgment you can have. I repeat, the better judgment you can have, not you will have. Because you must be able to reason properly. And taking the scientific approach of asking questions is one thing, but the integrity of your questions is something else. And that's where Lady Justice's blindfolds come in. A proper judgment requires impartiality. In other words, one must be unbiased. The blindfolds represent blindness to factors that often influence men, like money, power, friendship, or hate, jealousy, fear, or stereotype. That's why we see a snake and dog being disregarded by justitia. In this context, the snake represents hatred and the dog, friendship. Neither of them should influence one's judgment. This is obviously crucial in the court system. Nevertheless, judges can sometimes fall victim to greed and prejudice, and there are consequences. Sure, we aren't judges in the judiciary system, but we do play the role of one in our personal lives. We are part of discussions and debates. We listen to others complain or consult. We ought to judge with impartiality. Consistently having bad judgment may not get you behind bars, but it will make others lose trust in you. Again, we ought to judge with impartiality. Your friend could be wrong, your enemy could be right, and your judgment could be based on prejudice that you are blind to. Yes, I did say blind. That's why the symbolism of the blindfold was controversial in the Middle Ages, as it could also be interpreted as being blind to factors that unjustly influence your judgment. But that's simply a matter of perspective. Either way, one needs to foster unbiased reasoning, being blind to our emotional ties, and removing our animalistic side. For that, one needs to self-reflect. That's why Lady Justice is often seen with Prudentia, her mirror, and snake. Prudentia is the goddess of foresight. Prudentia comes from Latin providentia, which means foresight. The all-seeing eye is also known as the eye of providence, which comes from providentia. Foresight is achieved through wisdom, and wisdom through self-reflection. The snake represents wisdom. You must be thinking, wait, I thought the snake was evil. Remember, symbols have different meanings, even complete opposite meanings, and it all depends on the context. Prudentia's mirror represents self-reflection. We have to reflect on our own actions and thoughts, our past and current situation, in order to form a just opinion, and from there could we better analyze the external world and even predict certain outcomes. Justice has been linked to prophecy. We prevent the same mistake because we remember the consequence. What you state or claim has to be done with caution. Play the scenario in your head first. Have I experienced this before? Were they the same ingredients? What was it like? Prudentia is prudence or prudence in French and English and has come to mean caution. It's clear why justice and prudence go hand in hand. When you witness a situation of injustice due to biases or influences, it ought to be called out in one form or another. This is where the sword comes in. The sword symbolizes offense and defense. Held by justitia, it represents the enforcement of justice as well as its protection. The sword also represents battle and shows that justice is in constant battle with injustice. 
The sword is one of Justitia's earlier symbols. It may have been geared towards societal justice, but it ought to be applied to our daily lives as well. Not calling out an unjust situation makes you a coward. Though some situations are tougher than others and do require lots of courage. Courage is associated to justice, hence the lion often being portrayed with her. But sometimes situations can get veritably dangerous and it's no longer a matter of courage, but of timing. Injustice ought to be your enemy. The unjust derives from pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, sloth, also known as the seven cardinal sins. But worse is when injustice deceives, when it hides behind a mask and pretends it is justice. That's why we often see Lady Justice on top of a masked man or an evil looking being. Being crushed means to be taken down, to be made small. The lower level shows that it's beneath it. Goodness or heaven is higher up and evil or hell is lower down. Justice is a virtue that's above us, above humanity. She stands on top of the globe. She may be unreachable, but like the gods, she's a model to strive towards at the societal level and personal level in the way you treat others and in the way we think of others as they are directly related. To Carl Jung and his colleagues, the sphere of the world is a symbol of totality and denotes the self. Though justice has also been portrayed as male, her female representation has resonated more with the collective mind. The reason is likely to be that it is the female who gives birth. Order comes before manifestation. Themis, the goddess of justice, came before Zeus, the king of gods. She helped nurture him before she married him and became his advisor, or his mind. Themis is the order, not just the moral order, but also the natural order. She's the order that yields manifestation, aids manifestation, and essentially is the mind of manifestation. Like the yin to the yang, she's the background to the activity. She is the background of societies, communities, and homes. Whether the organization is just or unjust, she holds the invisible scale that humans base their actions on, sooner or later. Justice sets the order. That's why she wears a crown. The crown symbolizes power, glory, and authority. And lastly, we have the cornucopia. The cornucopia is the mythical horn of plenty. It keeps giving and giving, thus symbolizing abundance, nourishment, and prosperity. It's often associated to goddesses who provide and nurture, like Demeter, the goddess of harvest, Fortuna, the goddess of luck, or Abundancia, the goddess of abundance. Justice's cornucopia shows that her virtue nourishes the soul of humanity and will not stop as long as we continue to honor her. To take her path of prudence, self-reflection, and impartiality is to forge the path of reasoning, the key to a virtuous life. Reasoning is the basis of all virtues and of wisdom. Having wisdom is being endlessly rich. We may never be entirely just in our judgment as we are humans after all, and not gods. We are limited, fallible, and sinful. But it shouldn't stop us from striving to be just. After all, we've made it clear through the millennia that we are well aware of the standards of justice. We've personified her and identified what she entails through symbolism and allegories. We've immortalized Lady Justice as the order of all things moral and natural, set her at the top of humanity and even the godly realm. The history of Lady Justice shows that she's the order sought by societies and organizations, but first and foremost by the soul of man. To change the world around us, we first need to change the mind inside us. The pursuit of justice starts within us. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure you subscribe, comment, and share the video. A big thank you to all my patrons. Your support means everything. I'm a one-man show and I have big dreams for this channel and I cannot do this alone. So please, if you want to support, check out patreon.com slash chasing gods. Good news, the Chasing Gods podcast is now available on Apple Podcasts and soon on other apps. All the information is in the description box below or you can check out my website at chasinggods.com. All right, thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you soon.